Lots going on in the southeast with a low forming off the Carolina coast and a look at the rest of fall and a potentially active winter. Today we have two new forecasters to address our climatology and meteorology. Shelby and Haley will be contributing to the September Water Resources Outlook. Shelby, let's get it started with the climatology. Thanks, Todd. Glad to have this opportunity to be a part of providing this water resources outlook to the people in the southeast. In our graphic for the past 30 days, you can see precipitation maximas that track along with the path of Hurricane Idalia. Idalia came ashore in the big bend of Florida and moved northeast towards the Carolina coast. Most of the rain in the southeast during this period was associated with typical summertime fronts and Hurricane Idalia. Shades of red and pink dominate in Florida and along the Atlantic coast, representing five or more inches of rain in the last 30 days. In Alabama, the rainfall totals are more scattered, ranging from one to five inches. Looking at our departures from normal for the past 30 days, Alabama's deficit was widespread and a few inches below normal for most of the state. Idalia contributed to most of the positive anomaly you see here. The southeast received near or below normal rainfall in the past 30 days. In terms of the year-to-date precipitation, we are mostly above normal with pockets of normal to below normal in the eastern North Carolina and Gulf Coast of Alabama and the Florida Peninsula. The pink color in central South Carolina shows that they are several, several inches above normal. Those signals show again when looking at our stream flow normals. Below normal flows are the most widespread in parts of North Carolina and the Gulf Coast of Alabama. Though most of Florida is normal, we do see some pockets across the state that are low. Through Georgia and South Carolina, streams are normal and some coastal points are above normal, which is another residual from Hurricane Idalia. It is not abnormal for streams in the southeast to be below normal flow during this time of year. In fact, from August to October, we typically have minimal flooding because the streams are low. Being that dry weather and low stream flow is typ typical for this time of year, drought is also something that we want to keep an eye on. Extreme drought is developing in western Alabama. Remember, this area is not only in a precipitation deficit for the past 30 days, but for the entire year. Drought has also developed in the western areas of the Florida Gulf Coast near the Tampa area. Similar to western Alabama, this area is below its normal precipitation for the year. We are now in week 38 of the year. As you can see here in our river flood climatology based on previous years, we are in a wetter period of the summer season. This uptick in rainfall is typically tied to tropical systems. After this week, we will start to transition from our typical summer climatology to autumn, and the river flood potential begins to decrease, uh, giving us a minimum in our flood potential in weeks 42 through 45. This is the river flood climatology for our south and central Florida groups. We are in the peak of flood season for this area, which heavily overlaps with the hurricane season. As you can see, the flood climatology drops off as we move into October. Week 38 is in interestingly a minimum in the peak, and so this week again starts to allude to that changing in the season from summer to autumn. Looking at tropical storms broken down by regions of the southeast U.S., we can see that we've passed the peak, but we will remain in an active environment through about week 40. Tropical impacts during this time of year have been more in the regions of our green and blue bars. This includes the Carolinas, where Haley will be discussing some of the upcoming weekend rain impacts. Remember that our south and central Florida flood climatology has a minimum during this week, and we can see here that the Florida Peninsula is the reason, region that has the lowest count for tropical systems during this week. I will now hand it over to Haley to discuss the upcoming meteorology. Taking a look at the weather across the southeast, conditions start off dry today for most as high pressure meanders across the eastern third of the country. 
However, as you move further south and down into Florida, an upper-level disturbance continues to support the development of showers and storms. Off the coast, though, attention turns to potential tropical cyclone 16 as it develops today along a front draped across southern Florida. This potential tropical cyclone will move further up the coast and is expected to bring tropical storm force winds, storm surge, and heavy rain to the mid-Atlantic starting Friday. Impacts in the mid-Atlantic states are expected to persist into Saturday as well as the storm continues to move further up the coast. Going into Sunday, though, the heaviest rain for the Southeast River Forecast Center's area will begin to subside as the storm pulls away. Meanwhile, a somewhat messy system is expected to move across the Mississippi Valley as the new work week begins. This will allow for the chance for rain to begin to creep into the western portions of our area in Mississippi and Alabama. While this system becomes less well-defined, it will continue to move east through the early part of the week, bringing rain chances east with it. And this trend persists through Wednesday as well. Looking at WPC's seven-day rainfall forecast, you can see the rain from potential tropical cyclone 16 in the Carolinas and Virginia, especially near the coast where storm totals of two to four inches with local amounts up to six inches are currently predicted. Looking back towards Alabama and Mississippi, you can see the rainfall footprint from the system that is expected to move across the middle to lower Mississippi Valley. However, with the system losing steam as it travels east, totals across our area aren't expected to be as high as places further to our west. Moving ahead into the longer term, the Climate Prediction Center is predicting near to below normal rainfall for a majority of the southeast in their 8 to 14 day outlook, with only our mid-Atlantic coast showing any chance for above normal precipitation. Thank you, Haley. As we look ahead, let's take a look at the October outlook from the Climate Prediction Center. It looks active through the middle part of the U.S. Models are hinting at a possible above normal rainfall from the southwest U.S. all the way to the eastern U.S. seaboard. It does not extend into the southern portion of the southeast as tropical season is on the backside of its peak. This hints at rain being produced more from fronts moving south than from tropical weather moving out of the Atlantic and Gulf of Mexico. Before we talk about our seasonal forecast, it's important we talk about an important factor going into the forecast. Our equatorial Pacific Ocean temperatures have remained cool for the last few years, keeping us in a La Nina. While this year's forecast of warmer than normal temperatures in the Pacific look to be above normal, and this means an El Nino is in place and likely will be that way through the winter into spring based on current forecasts. Right now, it looks to be a moderate to strong El Nino through the whole period. So what does that mean for weather in the south for, El, for an El Nino winter? We tend to get a split in the jet streams with a northern jet and a southern jet. The southern jet tends to bring a conveyor belt of storms across the south and keep the southeast cool and wet. The analysis to the right shows precipitation anomalies on top with above normal rainfall in many of the years shown. The lower right-hand corner, cooler than normal temperatures. That usually comes in the form of not as much sun from the rainy days, so it's ten, days tend to be cooler and the overall temps are a little lower. It doesn't usually equate to more snow in the southeast. However, we have had years with snow in El Ninos, so we will be watching for that. With that, we will look at the CPC's seasonal outlook for October through December. We saw that the monthly forecast for October showed equal chances of above, below, and near normal precipitation um, for much of the southeast. The seasonal forecast is much bolder in predicting an increased chance of above normal precipitation through most of the southeast. This trend continues as we look at the January through March seasonal outlook. An active winter into spring is what we are forecasting, and this forecast has just about everything to do with El Nino. While this addresses the rainfall prediction, let's take a look at what we might expect from the rivers. Jeff Dober, one of our hydrologists, has looked at the climatology of El Nino winters, and here are the analogs of what happens to rivers in those years. In the pie charts, green indicates above normal flows for the month shown yellow in near normal, and red indicates below normal flow. November's analog shows that we have had more 
near to above normal than below normal. But as we can come out of the drier fall, we have had years where it takes time for rivers to react to the rain, and the signal for wet is probably not quite as strong. December definitely shows some anomalies in Florida, with very few years showing below normal. Granted, we are well into the dry season by then in Florida, but that still shows something. The rest of the southeast has a mix of above, below, and normal events, slightly hedging towards wet. January and February do really lean towards normal to above normal stream throws, flows through most of the southeast. That is our concern as we head into this winter, that above normal rainfall will produce an active flood season in the southeast. With that being said, you'll also notice that there is still some red in those pie charts, which means it is not a guarantee that we will have above normal stream flows, just more likely than most years. And this trend of high stream flows is even more pronounced in March. This is why we continue to dress a potentially active winter and spring with flooding in the southeast. And so, the bottom line, it looks like October will continue with mostly normal rainfall across the southeast, with there still being some potential for some tropical moisture and some more frontal rainfall in our more northern areas. However, as we look at late fall and the winter, it looks more active and the potential for flooding through all of the south southeast. We will continue to address this in each of the water resource outlooks over the next few months, and our next water resources outlook is expected to be recorded on October 19th. You'll continue to see receive event-based decision support briefings between now and then if there's potential for flooding in the area. Please contact us if you have any questions or concerns. Thanks for listening.